too long, American cities have been dominated by low-density, car-centric communities. In order to create more livable, human-scaled space, we must invest in high-quality public transit, safe cycling infrastructure, and mixed-use, medium-density development. If you're new here, my name's Diana, and this is Salt Air, a City Skyline series inspired by Salt Lake City. In today's video, we're gonna build a brand new neighborhood that's been transformed from a sleepy suburb to a bustling, well-connected area that's quickly becoming known as the city's second downtown. I'm primarily basing this area off of the Sugar House neighborhood in Salt Lake City, and in homage to the inspiration for the build, I've named it Sugarville. The Sugarville neighborhood has seen a massive transformation over the years, with mid-rise developments springing up all over and protected bike lanes being built on many of the streets enabling easy access to the area's public transit lines, creating a much more well-connected neighborhood while still retaining some of the character of its suburban past. An important catalyst for the increased density of Sugarville was the creation of the university line of the city's tram system. South Saltaire Station sits in between the Interstate 80 freeway, connecting Sugarville and neighboring South Saltaire to Saltaire University in the east and Central Station in downtown to the north. These sorts of transit-oriented developments are becoming more popular as a method of bringing density to the outer areas of American cities. These developments help create a sense of community and increase social interaction. Because they are designed to be walkable and mixed use, TODs often have a variety of amenities and services located within close proximity to one another. This can make it easier for people to access the things that they need on a daily basis and can encourage them to spend more time in their local community interacting with neighbors and participating in community events. However, developers in Sugarville weren't entirely well-intentioned when creating these. With so many higher density residential units nearby, it created an opportunity for big business to move in. Nearly all of Sugarville's denser developments surround large big box luxury shopping centers with vast seas of parking, reminding residents that the car is still king. One such development along Campus Avenue caters to upper-class patrons only, with designer clothing brands, high-end boutiques and restaurants, anchored by two large department stores. It has contributed to the displacement of many small local businesses that existed here prior to Sugarville's transformation. The busiest intersection in Sugarville is that of Capitol Avenue and 2400 South, also known as Campus Avenue. It hosts a mix of businesses, old and new, small and large, as well as many offices and a mix of low and high density housing. While Saltaire is not a one-to-one -one build of Salt Lake City, I'm doing my best recreation of this particular block in the Sugar House neighborhood, finding buildings that match up with what I'm seeing on Google Earth. The Capitol and Campus area is the central hub of all activity in Sugarville, and was one of its most auto-oriented quarters, where two of Saltaire's major thoroughfares meet. Much of the road layout south of Campus Avenue is tightly gridded, closely packed single-family homes and duplexes. Sugarville being an older neighborhood still has many early 20th century style homes within it, and along the south side of Campus Avenue are some smaller local shops and national brands that cater to a more middle-class clientele, the remnants of those who were not run out of business by the luxury big box developments that came with the increased density. For this particular apartment complex, I wanted to make the type of multifamily housing that is more typical of traditional suburban areas, still somewhat auto-oriented. One thing that the game has been missing for a while was the covered parking that is common in these types of complexes. These carport assets are part of the mid-century modern pack and work great in builds like this. Of course, the quintessential Utah grocer is Smith's, and Sugarville has its very own location as well. Again, I'm roughly basing the layout of the store on the Sugar House location, but swapping out the beauty salon on the corner for a donut shop. 
Further to the north is more high density housing and a small park by the freeway named Fairmont Park. The real Fairmont Park exists north of the freeway, but in game I placed it to the south and modified it a bit to fit in with the available space, using the winter ice rink in place of a skate park to account for the current season. Once we switch Saltaire back to a temperate map in the spring, I'll be sure to come and update this area. Additionally, I've added a generic office building as a stand-in for the Boys and Girls Club that exists in the real-life version and scaled everything else down to fit. When doing these sorts of builds based on real-life locations, it's often necessary to play a little with the scale and work on capturing the essence of a place, rather than worrying too much about getting it perfect. South of Fairmont Park and the higher density near it, I've added more lower density housing, using a mix of homes from the University City Pack and similarly styled workshop assets, giving this area a slightly different look and feel from the rest of Sugarville. While the real-life Sugar House has some transit access, the in-game analog of Sugarville takes that up a notch quite a bit. The first of the two on-street tram lines that serve Sugarville is the 2600 South Line, an east-west local line that goes through the center of the lower density part of the neighborhood, turning it into a modern-day streetcar suburb, with small local businesses and a few larger offices closer to the main arterials. The line starts near the Fairmont Park area in the west and terminates just south of Saltair University in the east. The homes in this area are very tightly packed together and uniform in a similar style to many other parts of the city. I quickly placed them using a custom tag I created in Find It and the Alt via Hotkey to randomly select the next home. And once I had a few blocks done, I copied them with Move It. This is a great technique for curating a particular look to lower detail areas without resorting to zoning, which can be unpredictable. Keeping in line with being a modern day streetcar suburb, Central Sugarville is very livable and well connected with the entire focus being on making sure everything residents need is within a short walk, bike ride, or a use of the tram. With a mix of uses and an increasing number of mid-rise buildings, this part of Sugarville is one of the most desirable areas to live in Saltaire and has become less affordable over recent years, with many long-term residents having been displaced due to the skyrocketing rents, often moving to more affordable parts of the city with the least fortunate living on the streets on the other side of town, out of sight. Capitol Avenue is Saltaire's main north-south arterial road, starting at the state capitol in the very north of town, running south through downtown and into Sugarville. While it has somewhat reliable bus service, even in Sugarville, it is still the city's premier strode with many big box retail stores as the core focus. However, the area is starting to change and much of the land around the main shopping center has been converted to mixed-use mid-rise buildings, a trend that is expected to continue into the future. Although this particular block is in a different location to the real sugar house, I'm using it as a model for one stretch of Capitol Avenue with the fast food restaurants, hotel, and offices, trying my best to get it right, down to including the actual businesses such as Wendy's, Taco Bell, AT&T, and Nordstrom. The goal wasn't necessarily to get everything exactly right in place, but to create some resemblance to the source material and improvise in the surrounding areas, making it a bit higher density, creating an alternate universe in which the neighborhood developed a bit more than in real life. Along the other side of Capitol are even more smaller local shops. These types of businesses, although declining, are what originally gave the neighborhood its charm and drew the initial influx of newer residents. However, the increased land value has led to many of these stores being bought out and replaced with big box retail. In the southwest portion of Sugarville is what's known as Auto Center Drive, named for the large concentration of car dealerships nearby. This highly trafficked area is the go-to for all things cars in the Saltaire region and the premier place to purchase a vehicle, no matter your budget or credit situation. This is super loosely based on another area entirely, the string of dealerships along State Street in the suburban city of Murray, south of Salt Lake. These dealerships have been in the area for decades with a mix of brand name new car dealers and smaller stores selling used vehicles. But times are changing and as the demand for more dense housing and mixed use increases, these properties are likely to be sold and redeveloped with the liquidation sales providing the lowest prices to buyers throughout the region. Since it was expanded to six lanes in the mid 20th century, 700 East had been a high speed expressway along the eastern side of Saltaire with virtually zero access to public transit of any kind in any of the nearby neighborhoods. 
In recent years, this has changed with the introduction of the new tram line leading north into downtown, as well as protected bike lanes along its entire route and a local bus line. This route has been transformed from being dominated by a massive volume of private cars into a multimodal corridor, providing the city's east end with a veritable buffet of much needed transit options. Being one of the oldest parts of Sugarville, the 700 East Corridor is lined with many shops built in a mid-century style. Somewhat auto-oriented, but not to the point of the more modern retail locations along Capitol and campus. In keeping with responsible planning practices, the city government recently banned new single-family residential and light-density commercial zoning for the entire length of 700 East. This has enabled the creation of nodes of high-density residential and office uses near the areas where the trams and buses stop, ensuring the highest utilization possible and encouraging residents to rethink their need for private car ownership. The ending of single-family zoning in major cities, especially along transit lines, is becoming more common and is a potential solution to both housing affordability and the traffic that plagues American cities, having the additional effect of helping to make areas outside the urban core more vibrant, enjoyable places to live and work. If you're a fan of this sort of city skylines content focused on transit and density and the effects it has on various neighborhoods throughout a city, I encourage you to check out this video in which we discuss and create historical streetcar suburbs in the city of Lake Success, set in 1960s California. So click here to watch, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of Saltaire.